So you've got your new 3D printer out of the box and put together, so what's next? It's time for your first print. We have an overview of 3D printing, we've sliced some files, and we've looked at some tools that make things easier. Now it's time to actually get your first print out. I'm going to show you a few things to do before you get started to hopefully make your first print successful. Before we turn the printer on, let's check a few things. First thing is belt tension. You want these things tight, but not too tight. When you move your axes, you don't want to see any buildup of the belt. Make sure all your axes move smoothly. You don't want any binding. Same with the Z-Rod. You want to be able to turn the Z-Motor easily with your hands and have the X-Axis move up and down. This is critical that this doesn't bind and it moves easily. Before you start printing, consider putting some grease on the Z-Rod just to increase your chances of success the first time. Before you turn the printer on in Auto Home, it's a good idea to run the Z-Rod and the X-Axis all the way down to the bed until you hear the Z in stop click. When you hear the Z in stop click, that's a good indication that your hot end won't collide with your bed on the first Auto Home. Make sure your X-Axis in stop triggers and make sure your Y axis in stop triggers. Now we're ready to power the printer on. Hit the power switch or simply plug your printer in. And let's do the first auto home. Now let's disable steppers. Grab a post-it note or a piece of paper and fold it in half. I like to level the bed once cold and then once after it's been heated up and then check it again and level one more time. This is the first level check cold. Move the hot end to each corner of the bed and check it with your piece of paper. The hot end should just touch the two pieces of paper. If the hot end feels too loose, Move the thumb screw to the left. If it feels too tight, move the thumb screw to the right. Move to each corner and complete this process. Too tight. Too loose. Just right. You may have to check it a couple of times. Once you're satisfied with the first cold level, we'll test the hot end and the heated bed. There are preheat settings for different filaments on most of these machines, but I like to do the setting manually. So we'll go to Control, Temperature, and I'll set the nozzle to around 215. And we'll set the bed to 55. These are roughly the values that I use for PLA. If the temps start rising, then you know your thermistors and your heaters are working. We'll wait for this to get up to temp, and then we'll re-level the bed. We're up to temp, let's auto home again. And disable steppers. Disabling steppers allows us to move the axes by hand. One more time around to each corner with the piece of paper to make sure the level hasn't changed. The heating is going to change the level some. This time around, be careful. The bed and the nozzle are hot. If you have to make large adjustments, you are going to get a teeter-totter effect. So if you have to pull this side down a lot, this side's going to come up and vice versa. So you want to allow for that. After you've checked it a couple of times while it's hot and you're happy with that, now we can auto home again. Now it's time to load your filament. When you have a brand new roll of filament, you never want the filament to leave your hand. It should either be on the spool or in one of these keepers on the side. If it leaves your hand, it has a great chance of getting wrapped around another piece of the filament and causing a snag. This will ruin the print. It might not always be obvious at the beginning, but you will eventually find that knot. So never let it loose. When preparing your filament to load, you want to cut it at a really sharp angle. 
This will make it much easier to load into the extruder and the bottom tube if you have one. Straighten out the end of your filament as much as you can. Load the filament in the extruder hole, pressing down on the spring lever. A trick is if the filament doesn't want to feed the first time, put the filament in the extruder gear and then let the spring loose. This will allow the extruder gear to guide the filament into where it needs to go. Push it through the Bowden tube or the direct drive extruder until it starts coming out the hot end. This way you know the filament's all the way to the hot end and you're ready to start extruding. Now we want to mount the spool on the spool holder. This printer has a spool holder, but you want to make sure that your spool is feeding as close to inline as your extruder is possible. This will prevent the printer from pulling the filament off the spool to the side. This can be tricky sometimes with full spools. We're almost ready to start printing. For this video, I've chosen this rocket model and I put it in vase mode so it'll print fast. I've already loaded the G-code on this SD card. If you want to learn more about that, check out the slicer video here. Depending on your build surface, if you have a build tack like sheet or a PEI sheet, you'll probably want to clean it off with some alcohol before you start the print, just to ensure there's no grease from fingerprints left on it. Or if you're working with a glass or an aluminum bed, you want to hit it with a coat of your preferred bed topping. I usually use glue stick. So we'll insert the SD card. On some versions of firmware, you'll have to load the SD card every time you insert a new file. So change SD card, and then print from SD. Find your model, and it should start printing. It's very important to watch the first layer print. It needs to be squished onto the bed enough to stick, but not so squished that it causes elephant foot on the bottom of the print. Now that the model's done, you take your scraper and you very carefully scrape the bottom layer off of the build surface. If the model is really stuck, you can use a razor blade, but be very careful with the razor because you will gouge your bed surface. You want to work an edge at a time until the model's free, working from the outside in. And that is your first print on your 3D printer. Of course, this was just a high-level overview, and every printer is going to be a little different, but hopefully this was enough to get you going on your first print and avoid a few common mistakes. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts below, and as always, thanks for watching.